Good morning, everyone. This is Gail Anderson, and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. Good to have you all today. Hope you're having an awesome week. Um, we finally, in Tulsa, have settled down to getting a little bit cooler weather. Our fall is on its way, thank goodness. It seemed like we were having 90s all the way through the weekend. It was very, very hot. But hopefully we're gonna have a gorgeous fall, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to just having some cool weather. So anyway, welcome. Um, I had promised you a while ago that I would let you know about how you can purchase these Inspirational Moments for Moms cards. Now, first of all, these are a lot of the quotes that I do in my mentoring dinner. Thanks for those hearts. If you like what I'm talking about, please tap on the screen and give me some hearts. Um, a lot of these are the quotes that I use during my mentoring dinners. They are things to keep you going as a mom, to remind you of your goal and your focus. Like here, your time is limited, so limit your time to the most important thing. Be present in the moment with your kids today. Ten years from now, will what I'm doing matter? And I tell you what, that was something that I thought about all the time. So, these are beautiful cards that my daughter Rachel used her graphic capabilities and made. They're beautiful. You can set them out in your house. Um, you can have one for every day of the month to help you remember what you're doing and keep you going. Um, quality time happens through a quantity of time. Whatever you celebrate and reward will be repeated. These are things that I think will really help you in being a mom, just help keep you focused, keep you on track. Anyway, I am selling these in this cute little bath, this cute little bag, and these can be given as gifts. They'd be a wonderful gift for a brand new mom who's starting out being a mom and really wanting to get focused and intentional about her parenting. These are $17 if I have to ship them to you. If you do come to one of my mentoring dinners, you can get them for $14. And if you're interested in doing that, if you will email me, uh, gailmichelle at gmail.com, and Michelle just has one L, Gail is G-A-I-L, I don't have my little card here to show you. Um, let me know how many sets you want, and give me your address, and I will send you a request through Square Cash. And then you can Square Cash me, and I'll get them right in the mail for you. Um, really, it would make an awesome gift, too as well as help you, I hope. So today I've had several people asking me how they can make changes with their kids, how they can, how to start new routines with their kids. That's basically how I describe it. So I did write up some notes here. How many of you like, Taryn, how are you? Good to see you. How many of you do feel like along the way you make changes with your kids? You change rules, you change policies, you change something that you're gonna do on a regular basis. Um, let me hear from you. About an hour ago, I was hoping you were coming on to, yeah, it's about time, huh? <laughs> I'm just getting sidetracked with many things in life, but um, I always have things to talk about. I'll tell you that. So yeah, this is something I've had down for a while that, that was requested. But we do make changes with our kids. We do want to change the way we're doing things, establish a new rule, um, maybe begin having a family night. Maybe you want to start having the kids be more responsible around the house, whether that be for household chores or for just keeping the living area clean, keeping their stuff put away. And you know what? That can be kind of negative for the kids when you come down. Okay, we're going to start doing this. Everybody has to do this. If you don't do it, you're going to be in trouble. So I'm just going to give you exactly what you need. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that will help. Um, so first of all, I think that you need to sit down and have like a family meeting together. Sit down and talk with your kids. And usually with mom and dad together, that's the best because you're actually confronting it as a team, as a family, a really good thing to do. If you have something that you've been wanting to introduce that's new with your kids, a new routine, go ahead and just write that in so I can see what you're looking at. Um, in sitting down with your kids, the first thing I would suggest is that you admit that you don't always do things the right way. Okay, in the past, you know, we've always been able to wear our shoes in the house, but now you guys, we have new carpeting. So we need to establish some new habits, some new rules for the family. So 
Be humble about it if you're making a change and also explain the reasoning behind it. Um, explain that you want to make that change for everybody's good. We certainly don't want to be having marks on the carpet and have to be using carpet cleaner or calling in a carpet cleaner. The iPad has been regulated for my four-year-old always, but she only wants to watch YouTube lately. That's interesting. Interesting. So what is she watching on YouTube? Nothing educational. Uh, well, then I, I would actually sit down with her and say, hey, you know, this is a tool that we can use but it can be something that keeps us from doing other things. Baby Alive videos. Oh, that's cute. But even, Taryn, the habit of constantly watching something that is stimulating to where you're not doing anything is probably something that you want to curtail. Now, when I interviewed my son, Jesse, he talked about this specifically. So you might enjoy going back and looking at Jesse's interview. That was in September sometime, and that's on YouTube, of course, under the title Mentoring Moments for Moms. You'll see Interview with Jesse Anderson. Um, the change should be something that helps everyone, but it's also going to help mom and dad specifically. I let her use it one time a day for 20 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and then really, maybe you want to direct what she watches. You know, if you want it to turn into something educational, then restrict that so that you just do educational. But fun isn't so bad either, especially at her age. That's enjoyable. And as kids get older, it's really nice to be able to use that as a reward. Certain blocks of time that they get that as a reward after they've been doing other things. Okay, so in talking about establishing a family night, that's one of the things. Oh, that's great. Five minutes, baby alive, 15 minutes, something else. Awesome. So family night was one of the things specifically that I was asked about, and it was specifically with teenagers. So I definitely say you need to sit down, talk about it, um, show how this is going to help everybody how we're gonna be closer as a family, we're gonna have more time. Um, it may mean with a teenager that he has to give up some other things, like maybe he had another thing he liked to do on Thursday nights. So you've gotta be able to sit down, show them what's in it for them, definitely, and then have some consistency with doing it because the less consistency you have, the more optional it is, the more you're gonna have other things enter in, whether that be with elementary age kids, junior high, or high school. And sometimes I think it is the hardest with those ages because they like their freedom. But a family night is something that has so many rewards, and if it's just once a week, especially if you plan it on a Sunday, which usually is in a high activity day, then that's something that they should be able to fit in and plan for. Friday movie, pizza, and cookies. I love it. Your kids will remember that. And you know, when they are grown and married and have their own kids, you'll find them doing the same thing. That's where you know you really won. You really did right. But you've got to protect that then too. So, um, also if there's a way that you can get the kids to be involved in it. So if it's family night, then definitely you're saying, okay, let's plan who's going to be in charge of family night that night. Have restrictions for it, like we had one where you couldn't spend any money, but say, okay, it's going to be your night to plan. We have two kids, two parents, so everybody's gonna get a chance to plan once every four weeks. So that gives them some grit in it. They have some responsibility in it. They're getting something out of it. And it doesn't have to be a long, long time. A couple hours is awesome. It's the habit that you do over and over again and that you protect that is going to bring those rewards. Thanks for those hearts, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that we had to do when we started family night, of course, well, when we were doing it, was limit other activities. And sometimes that meant we could not have the outside teams or stuff like that, uh, extracurricular activities. So that was something, especially with five kids, that we had to limit. But we showed the kids, okay, we're going to take a season off because we don't have these other nights to use and we're gonna have our family night here. And you know what, another season, we'll get back into that. And during that season, then maybe family night can change to an easier time. There's always things that can replace. And instead of eliminating things completely, just take a season off, 
or be able to show them how this is going to replace it for a while. We're going to have fun with the family instead of with our friends tonight. Okay, other things to consider, and I think I mentioned this, set a specific date to start and then be consistent with that night of the week. If it's a roving day, you're gonna find a lot more as children get older that they complain about, oh man, but I was gonna go over to Billy's house on Thursday night. I don't wanna do family night, but when it's a set thing, there's less arguing. That's like having the boundaries there. My parents didn't start this until I was in middle school and it was a bummer, I bet it was. What did you feel like you were giving up, Taryn? because obviously at middle school you had some other things that you wanted to do. And we have to understand that we're always not gonna get, I could only pick one night to do something a weekend. You know what, we did that too. <laughs> and I think it's very good because it's still, family night brings you back to that unit as the family and that yes, we love it now. And it also, if you're letting them go out whenever they want, four, five, six nights a week, that's really going to be pulling away from a lot of things. Pulling away from school, homework, family, relationships, and maybe extracurricular activities like music lessons. So there does need to be a balance between those things. So if you have a set date that you're starting and then a set night that you're doing this, there's gonna be a lot less arguing. Same thing if you decide, okay, we're going to all clean the house together Saturday morning from eight to 10. It's set, we're gonna start it, and that consistency all the time. I was an only child, we didn't really have a set in stone fun thing, so, but you do appreciate the family nights that you had, which were awesome. So, use this time to get that routine built in, and then reward it. I mean, have something fun at the end of family night. Have a treat, have a snack, do something especially fun, which makes it worth it, and they can start building in that positive attitude toward it. If you also just reward them with verbal praise for cooperating, you know, if you're gonna start cleaning the house together and everybody has their responsibilities on Saturday morning, that means the rest of the weekend is free for people to be able to do things. And it's also great because we have a clean house and we can all enjoy it. Training is a process. I want them to want to be with me, amen. That's great, so make it fun. Don't expect everything to go smoothly at first, especially if you're just starting out, there will be ruffles and you'll have to get through that, but start out reinforcing them, not being too hard and fast, but do set it in stone. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. And you can actually have them help plan the night at this first meeting where you start discussing it and we're gonna start a new routine you know that this is the only night you can possibly do it. So just kind of lead them in a discussion where you actually wind up planning it for what you think is probably the best time that you were gonna plan it for anyway. Um, oh, here's one, if you're doing something like the housework on Saturday mornings, make it a game. If they're learning something new or given a new responsibility, make it a game, set the timer, okay. We're gonna clean house for two hours, but I bet we can get this done in an hour and a half. Let's set a timer for 30 minutes. Everybody go do your job, and then let's see where we're at and how we've done. Um, really fun to be able to do that, especially if you're doing something like, dropping a nap is on my horizon for my four-year-old. I'll need to implement rest time. Yes, awesome. Um, don't expect things to go smoothly. Make it a game. Let's see, where was I? Okay. Oh yeah, with cleaning the house together. Help them to all be able to enjoy the fact that it is clean together and you can enjoy that. I may have thought, forgotten. Recommend rewarding that behavior. Yeah, I would. And definitely, I mean, the best thing what I do with my, she's five now, my granddaughter, is I put her in bed at nap time with books. And I tell her she gets to sit there and read books, you know, for the next hour or two hours, you know, definitely have a limit on it. And then of course, if she's tired enough, she will fall asleep when she's reading the books. It's adorable to go in there and these books are scattered all before her and she's been reading and fallen asleep. 
but I don't like to have it definitely any longer than two hours. And the thing is, that is her quiet time. It is not just nap time, it's quiet time. Everybody has busy days and we all need a rest time. Baby needs a rest, mommy needs a rest, and this is your rest. No, you don't have to fall asleep, but you can look at your books. I know there are other things you can do during rest time, you know, play games and stuff like that, but I like to keep it, especially for the younger ones, just books. That is a great activity to promote, great thing to promote, reading of books, looking at books, telling the stories as you see them, since you can't read yet, in the books. Um, okay, oh, and one of the things that, I'm just going to throw this in here, but if you're trying to do something like keep the house picked up, the main living area, and you're getting your kids to work on that. Eventually, as we get to that point, you know, we can say, okay, it's time for an all house cleanup. We didn't keep this area clean. Or after everybody's home from school and you're ready for dinner, take 10 minutes and say, okay, we, we still have books and stuff in here. Let's everybody come in, get their stuff, and then we'll get ready for dinner or get ready for dad to come home. Another thing you can do eventually, which is a negative, but if the kids are old enough, you can have a bag, a grocery sack that you put things in if they're left out. And there's certain times during the day that you'll do that, maybe before lunch and then before dinner. And then they have to pay to get them out or they have to ask to get them out or something that's a little bit of a negative. Uh, let's see, be consistent, boundaries and routines give kids security. It does help. And even though they complain, they really probably inside sometimes like that. They like that mom is making an effort. They like that mom is actually doing something with the family instead of just always doing her own stuff. There are benefits and believe me, the minute they leave the house, at 18 or 19 or whatever, they will start realizing all those things and be thanking you like crazy. But definitely reward them as they're going along. Catch them doing something good. Mommy ain't easy. I know, so much to think of, so much to think of. <laughs> but reward them verbally or even give them special time, special time with you or a special time on a computer game or something like that. Thank you, Taryn, sure appreciate that. Um, just so you can keep rewarding that thing. I am all about rewards. You can always go to consequences. You can always teach by negative stuff, but I like to start with the positive and reinforcing that. So um, that's it for today. I'm preparing for my uh, mentoring dinner too for next Monday night. And hopefully I'm going to get my husband on here to talk with me tomorrow a little bit about when you disagree on things in parenting or maybe even generally in marriage, but I mean, how we handle that. Uh, really enjoy having him on here and getting his input as well as mine because it's, it's not just me. This was a team effort, a joint thing. So we'll see what's on for his schedule tomorrow and how that'll work. And again, if you're interested, which son about the iPad time? That was Jesse. Should have been around the first, first week of September, I want to say. Yeah. And if you're interested in these inspirational moments for moms, email me. My email is in the profile. Let me know how many you want to buy. Um, they are $17 each shipped. If you live in Tulsa, I can cut the shipping and give them to you for $14. Let me know how many you want and what your address is, and I will send you a request through Square Cash. I've used Square Cash for years. It is really safe. You just connect it with your account or your credit card or whatever. But I would love to send those to you. They have been a real blessing to all those that have them so far. So have an awesome day. Hope you're doing well and be happy today. This is the day that the Lord has made and you can rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks everybody.